Hi everybody, today's lesson is about modeling with quadratic functions. So in example one, we're going to write the equation of the parabola given that it passes through the point negative 4, 7 and has the vertex negative 2, 5. So when I see the word vertex, I'm thinking, wow, great, they gave me the vertex. That's always HK. And they gave me a point, which I know is also XY. Right, every ordered pair is x, y. And since they gave me the vertex, I'm going to remember what vertex form looks like. That is a times x minus h squared plus k. Right, that's a general form of a parabola in vertex form. So since they gave me the vertex, I'm going to go here and see what I can do. So they gave me h and k, and they gave me x and y, which only leaves one variable unknown which is good because I only have one equation. So I'm going to substitute these values in. So I get 7 equals a times, then I've got x minus h, so negative 4 minus negative 2 squared, and then plus k, which would be plus 5. Then I'm going to simplify here. So 7 equals a, well, negative 4 plus 2 is negative 2 squared plus 5. Subtract 5 from both sides gives me 2 equals. Negative 2 squared is 4a. So you get a is equal to 1 half. So once you have a, you have all of the necessary information to write the general equation of a parabola. So that would be y equals a is 1 half x plus 2, right, because minus a negative 2 squared plus 5 is my final answer for that in vertex form. Part B, it has x-intercepts of 7 and 10, and it passes through the point negative 2, 7. All right, so since it's giving me x-intercepts, I want to write down intercept form. So that's y equals a, and then I've got x minus p and y minus q. Now, the variables don't necessarily matter, but, um, and by this I should have an x here, right, it's in factored form because they're x-intercepts. So when I have an x-intercept of 7 and 10, that means, you know, p equals 7 and q equals 10, and it's passing through the point x, y. So I'm going to substitute that information again. So I have 27 equals a times, well, x is negative 2 minus 7 times negative 2 minus 10. But I'm just substituting in the values for my intercepts and x and y. So that gives me 27 equals a times, that's negative 9, times negative 12, which is 108a. So 27 equals 108a. Divide both sides by 108. You get a equals 1 fourth. So I have y equals 1 fourth. x minus 7 times x minus 10. All right, and let's look at what this graph would look like. So if I have, let's pretend that's 7, 0, and 10, 0. And it passes through negative 2, 27. It's going to have to look something like this. All right, and it's positive, so you can always double check to make sure you have the right answer. Just make sure it makes sense. Okay, so for the rest of this, you absolutely need your graphing calculator. So if you don't have that handy, um, I need you to take it out right now, and you need to follow along with all the buttons we're going to press um, because you're going to be responsible for that information. So the table shows the university's budget in millions of dollars over a 10-year period where x equals 0, represents the first year in the 10-year period. Write the equation for the budget of the university. All right, so we have x and y, and we're going to use our calculators to do this. So the first button you're going to press is stat, and then you're going to go to edit, and you're going to change L1 and L2 with x and y. 
So take a second to write that down and then you're going to follow along because again you need to know how to do this. So if there's a point where you want to rewatch this please feel free. So I'm going to go to stat. I'm going to press enter on edit and I have L1 and L2. If you have values in here you can scroll up to L1, press clear and press enter. It's going to clear it for you. So I'm just going to enter in my x value. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way to 9. And again, you should be doing this on your own calculator. And then in L2, I'm going to put my y value. So 65, 32, 22, and you just press enter to move to the next line. I hope that you're following along with me. And when we're done with this, we're going to tell our calculators what to do. So you have to tell them the information that they're going to use. And what you're going to do is you're going to go to stat, you're going to go to calc, and you're going to do what we call quad reg, which is quadratic regression. All right, in full. So that's quadratic regression. So, hit the stat button. To get to calc, you need to go to the right. Maybe I'll draw an arrow to help you remember. And then you're going to scroll down to option number five, which is quad reg, quadratic regression. I want you to press enter. All right, so your calculator might look different than mine. If you have an older operating system, you can press enter right now. If yours doesn't look like mine, press enter. If yours does, we have to go down to calculate and then press enter. And it's giving me all this information. So the general formula is y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, right? That's standard form of a quadratic. But they're giving me a, b, and c. So I have to plug those in. So it's going to be 3.22x squared. And then it's a negative 15.3 six x plus forty nine point five four. Alright, I'm just rounding to the hundredths place. Alright, so you have to know how to do that on your calculator. So make sure that you um, take your time and, and write down those steps and practice if you need to. Alright, so example three, you are kicking a soccer goal a soccer ball down the field. The, p the path of the ball is modeled by this function here, this equation, and I want to know how far does the ball travel when it hits the ground. So I need to graph it. All right, so I'm going to go to y equals, and I'm going to type it in. So negative 0.8x squared plus 7.2x. Oh, my plus did not show up. All right, and if I look at my graph, I cannot see the entire path of the ball, right? Part of this top part is missing. So I need my graph to be taller, right? I need my y values to be bigger. So I need to change that. So since I'm looking for it to be taller, I'm going to go to the window, and I'm going to go to y max, because I need my maximum y value to be taller. So I'm going to change it to like 20. You know, you could play around with that to see what works best. Then I hit graph, and now I can see it. So this is the path of the ball. So if you're looking at your graph, which you should also have in your calculator, so make sure you're following along in your calculator, I'm looking for when it hits the ground again. So it's kicked at zero, and then it's hitting the ground over here. So I need to calculate, that's an x-intercept, so I need to find the zero. All right, so let's second calc zero, head over to the right, a little closer to the zero, you need a left bound point and a right bound point. So I'm going to use this point as my left point, and then I'm going to go to the other side of my zero on the right, press enter, press enter one more time, and it's at, the point is nine zero, all right? but I want to know how far it traveled. So that would be nine uh, feet. Um, I should have said in the direction that it's in feet. 
All right, so then the maximum height of the ball. All right, so we need to figure out how, what the maximum point is here. All right, so we need to calculate, so second calc, maximum, and then I need to head back towards that point. And I'm going to do similar to what I just did for the zero, right? It's left bound, right bound. So I'm going to go to the left a little, press enter. Then I'm going to go on the other side on the right and press enter. Press enter one more time. And you get the point is 4.5, All right, but I'm looking for the y direction, right? The height of the ball. So that's 16.2 feet. And then the last question, you're trying to score a goal, um, and the regulation soccer goal is 8 feet tall, and the goal is 7.5 feet away from you, all right? So here's my goal that's 8 feet tall, and it is 7.5 feet away. Are you going to score with this kick? Use mathematical reasoning to support your answer. So I need to figure out if when I kick the ball, is it going to be able to make it in the goal? Is it going to come short or am I going to kick it over the top, right? I have to figure out where it's going. So I need to know the goal is 7.5 feet away. So what happens when X is 7.5 feet? Well, let's figure that out. We have a, an equation, so let's use it. So Y equals negative 0.8 times 7.5 squared plus 7.2 times 7.5. So that means y squared or y equals 9. So that means at 7.5 feet my ball is at 9 feet. So what happens? Well, that is above the goal, so if it keeps going, it's going to hit right over. So, no, the ball is one foot above the goal, so you would be kicking it over the top. Well, that looks really bad, so I'll rewrite that, kicking it over the top. And that concludes the note. So if make sure you are responsible for knowing all these calculator keys. So make sure that you rewind and rewatch and follow along with your calculator if you need any extra help. We'll see you next time.